My name is Tom Spiller, and I'm the founder of the Essex County Ghost Project here in Haverhill. Bill and Lawrence, my team right inside of And um, we have a very interesting group of people. We do a paranormal investigators. We do a little bit. I got a ufologist, a cryptozoologist on the team. My tech guy Bob's here, my historian Joe's here with me. And when I was at, when I thought about doing this talk, I said, well, what would you want to be able to be a fun one to do for people who live nearby and here and beyond? So through the years, I've been collecting stories from people. And come to find out, there's, this, there's certain areas that are able to have a very high end amount of paranormal activity. You'll see that in bracket, in the bracket section, near Middlesex Street. Um, basically from the bridge up to the common is a high-end area. Um, the Primrose Street, we've done a lot of private investigations up in that area. Um, and here comes my case manager. But I was looking at this story. One of my favorite poets growing up in the film was Whittier. And you read early New England stuff, you read a lot about Whittier. But what he did was interesting took a lot of folklore and he wrote about poetry on it. Well, over the last year or so with the pandemic, Essex County Ghost Project did not shut down. We kept doing private home investigations as the calls came in. I was doing top live shows weekly from different cemeteries. We kept going. Um, and the, my reasons for keep going is if I get a call and we can get elevated and thrown down the flight of stairs, it didn't matter to me. I'm going to help those families out no matter what. So I started going through my records. Some of these were cases we did, and some of these were just hearing stories in coffee shops or people that know me around the city. I'm kind of a shy guy until you get to know me. And I got this map of, this, of the whole city of Hagel, and I started putting tax in it. Well, I had to pull out most of the tax out of this area. And I said, wow, that's a big area. And I said, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on in this area. And there's recent in this area. Now, right on Colas Hill Road two weeks ago, someone sent me that picture. Two very interesting objects in the sky. Right off Colas Hill Road. So I said, this is interesting. Now, I've spent a lot of time investigating and researching the Bridgewater Triangle, the Ossipy Triangle, which Woody wrote a lot about in Ossipy, New Hampshire. And I said, this is interesting. It's not really a triangle, but I decided to call this area the Canosa Lake Triangle, or what Paulina would call it, flat area. Basically, um, okay, the, I just want to make sure I didn't, okay, the white ones are the paranormal, the ghosts. The red would be UFOs, and the green would be Bigfoot. Now, there's been no Bigfoot sightings in Haverhill recently. Let me get that straight now. Don't worry about it. But throughout the 60s and the 70s, in this area here, and if you go to hcmedia.org and click on um, shows, click on the, radio, the podcast shows, I had a gentleman on that actually had an account at Silver Hill before the school was built, when it was an apple orchard. So there's been no Bigfoot sightings, though since the 70s and early 80s. But the UFO stuff is picking up. There's been sightings all over Hagel recently, even though the other side of Hagel near the Hilldale Cemetery, which I'm the board president of, and I run all the ghost hunts over there. So the Canosa Triangle, the Canosa Lake Triangle, um, basically it goes from, uh, as you can see here, Route 108, you know, all the way to the river from about where Winnikinny Castle is. Um, and I'm gonna go into some of these areas and we have some EVPs from these areas that we will be playing. Some of this stuff I can't talk about because they were private home investigations. That's why they're just tapped in the area out. And that's why you don't see any addresses because people bring me in and they don't want their houses done with their haunted, so we keep it quiet. That's how I get a lot of this information. But some of the public stuff that we talk about, I'll be more than happy to get into. And I'm gonna, I may fog up a little bit because I just realized uh, this week I'm the oldest guy in the room. Yeah, that's not gonna work too well. It's gonna happen somehow. 
Um, I needed reading glasses. Now I'm getting old. That's what happens when you turn 88 years old. You're 89 years old. So, um, 108 North, Merrimack River to the south, 125 to the west, and Merrimack Mass to the east. And this actually goes into Merrimack because we picked up a few cases over the last year and a half that are right over the border. Literally right over the border. I can't say where they are, private homes. And they're, they're all again clustered in this area, which is interesting. And we'll get into some of the reasons why. But some of the hot spots, Children of Israel, 1893 Cemetery on Middle Road, the Haunted County Bridge on Middle Road, Suicide Pond on Middle Road, Millville Dam holds back 118,000 gallons of water built in 1895, 45 feet high. Take a walk out to the Millville Reservoir. It's amazing out there. It really is. Um, in fact, we were out there one day investigating a private home that abuts the Millville Reservoir, and there was a group of us investigators out there trying to figure out what was going on, and one of the guys spoke, he's from Michigan, and he spoke one of the native tongues, and he said something in Native American, so we had a whole group of us all of a sudden, this thing came flying right, right, right between all of us, right there, there was nobody in the woods at all, right there at um, the, the reservoir area. Private homes on East Broadway, Colas Hill Road, any of these areas uh, down on Water Street, um, that whole area, Riverside. Greenwood Cemetery, 1785 on East Broadway. Walnut Cemetery, 1748. Um, not in present day Northern Essex, but there were some sightings of Bigfoot prior to Northern Essex being built. And a couple of people told me early on in the 80s they were leaving school late at night and saw some stuff flying over their head. But still in the same neighborhood. Winnikinny Castle, Winnikinny Park, very active. The park is extremely active. Uh, the Pentucket Graveyard, another location that's on Water Street. That's the oldest graveyard in the city or the burial ground. 1668 to 1850. Uh, there's been UFO sightings again all over this area. If you drive there at night, and I drive this area a lot, a lot of feeling of uneasiness. Um, and we're going to get into some of that. <clears throat> County Bridge Road is no longer on the map. If you're familiar with Middle Road at all, anybody here familiar with Middle Road? Okay. County Bridge Road is a trail that goes out in the woods now. That's where the William um, Bridge. And you can see a good picture of the Whittier Bridge. And I got other pictures here I'll be posting up. But that's the Whittier Haunted Bridge. It doesn't look like that today at all. There's a post town of it right there. Uh, and that's Millville Dam for anybody that's not 100% sure. We wrote a little poem about that too. Um, this, all this stuff here that you see, photocopy, came out of Hitch Yourself to Hable through Whittier Land. It's a great um, book. Um, County Bridge Road. Okay, so that's that area there. Uh, John Greenleaf Whittier uh, was born here in Haverhill in 1807, died in 1892 in Hampton Falls, New Hampshire. The house is no longer there. If you're familiar with Hampton Falls on the Seabrook Hampton Falls area, if you see where Dodge Agway is on the left hand side after the big monument with the cannons to it, that's actually Governor Weir's monument. That's where the Whittier House was. There was still some archive stuff at the Hampton Falls Historical Society on Route 80 heading towards Exeter by Apple Press Farms. Uh, so if you're interested in that. He grew up on a farm. He was big into weird New England and a lot of his poetry, some of it, the two-headed stake, the county bridge, the two-headed stake of Newburyport, the county bridge here in Haverhill, um, the Gloucester Lights, which was an old ship that sunk out in Gloucester Harbor. And the, Whittier, the, the spirits around the Whittier Covered Bridge in Ossipi. There's been Bigfoot sightings out there, the Whittier train station, Whittier Road about haunts all over that area. So it, it's all in his poetry. It's pretty interesting. The first cemetery I want to discuss, and I want to read some poetry out of this, and I believe we have a piece from this one. Greenwood Cemetery, Bob? Yeah. 
All right, we're gonna play those EVPs in a minute. The Greenwood Cemetery is still being buried on today in 1785. It's located on East Broadway. Um, the Countess Mary um, de Bote is buried interned over there. And every so often, you'll see her spirit crossing the street. Uh, Andre Dubois is also interned in there. Um, and there's, so it's almost like a Raiders Cemetery, and Woody is wrote something about that. So we're going to run. You ready for the EV people? Or no? Greenwood. And then I'll talk about the Countess real quick. So what's the first one, Bob, so I can? Okay, this come over in French. We were doing a live show from there on my Tom my Facebook page, and I went, somebody, it's usually Sarah who's sitting in the back of my with my Sarah. Um, she'll run the audio of the, of the phone for me so we can do this, and then Bob runs his own recorders and video cameras, and then he goes back and listens. So Bob, take it away. Did you guys hear that? Try to get more. Just to get the speaker right. Did you hear that? That's not a, that's like a class B EVP. It's a little bit harder to hear, but you can hear it. There's A, B, C, D, and there's everybody uses different ones. We stop at C. Because after C, it sounds like static electricity. Next one, Bob. So what I'm going to do is attempt to, like I said, I'm getting old. So I'm going to read a little bit of the countless here. Um, yeah, okay, this is going to work. We'll, we'll try this. Okay. I know not time and space so intervene, whether still waiting with trust serene. Thou bearest up thy four score years and ten or called at last I'm now heaven citizen. But there, but here or there, a pleasant thought of thee, like an old friend all day, has been with the shy still boy from whom kindly handed, smooth is high pathway to wonderland. Of thou a fancy, gray manhood, yet keep green memory of early death. So, I mean, this is a very long poem. We're not going to spend all night, but I just wanted to give you a little, a little uh, talk on this. So the next cemetery we're going to go to in that area here. Um, okay. I'm going to make this disappear for a minute. <laughs> Walnut. This was a picture taken years ago with a fundraiser right here for the cemeteries. Um, it looks like someone might be holding a gun. This is right in the middle of Walnut Cemetery. 
Um, this is where Lydia Ayer's grave is. And Lydia Ayer was part of the, um, we had a lot of pendulum work done a couple times when we've been there. And I'm going to read this short poem, and then we're going to take some EVPs from there. So the poem that, if you've ever been to, who's been to this cemetery? Anybody? Yeah? Oh, we didn't? Okay, forget that then. Sorry about that. That's my mistake. So, see this schoolhouse? They replaced the old Lydia Air stone with a beautiful stone with the schoolhouse on it. And, um, all right, so in school days, still sits the schoolhouse by the road, a ragged beggar sleeping around. It's still the sumacs grow, and blackberry vines are creeping. And a herd of tremble of her voice, as if fault confessing. I'm sorry that I spelled the, the word. I hate to go above you, because the brown eyes lower fell. Because you see, I love you. Still, memory of that gray-haired man. That sweet child face is showing. Dear girl, the grass is on her grave. Have 40 years been growing. He lives to learn in the life. High school, how few who pass above lament their triumph and loss, like her because they love him. So it's a very interesting place. We've been in there a few times, and I use a pendulum. And I don't have one. I didn't bring it with me, but it would be pretty much anything for a pendulum. And a pendulum is used as a thousand method, like thousand rods. Anybody who comes to the house and say we master the pendulum, you tell them to see it later. Because there's no way of mastering this thing. And I've been using it for years, years and years and years, and I still say I will never master it. But we got a lot of hits around the Looney Air Grave, a lot, and um, a few throughout the cemetery since we've been doing this. So that's another one of those areas that's got heavily hit on. All right, next. All right, the next one is Kentucky Cemetery. Okay, Kentucky Cemetery, everyone know where that is? Right on Water Street, it's the oldest uh, burial ground and graveyard in the city. It is right across the street from the gas station on Water Street. You're heading to the old building 19 to make that funny intersection. And on the left-hand side, it, it's like Elmwood goes right around. I mean, Linwood Cemetery goes literally right around this great cemetery. So it's the first site of the first and second meeting house. Um, all right, so these are some of the pictures. This was taken from the front entrance of the cemetery, this light anomaly. There's an old, which is a light anomaly, which, you know, some people say it's, you know, it could be a bug, but sometimes with a bug, you'll actually see the body inside the circle. And there's an old up there. This is me. Okay, so I was going to have this grave set of stones, as you can see, right? And what happened was my toad started burning. I have the abilities to feel and see things and channel things. So as you can see, my throat started burning. So afterwards, I went back up here to the Able Public Library Special Collections, and I looked up the family that was here the old ones, and found out that they, uh, them, they died from throat this time That's why my throat was burning. I can actually channel things. Channeling is when you freely let a spirit inside your body. And sometimes I use that to help cleanse out houses. If you've got a negative entity in your house or something that's not good, or even inside of you, I'll channel the spirit. It funnels through my body and you get rid of it. So, and then over here, there was nobody smoking or anything. Can you see the mist and stuff that's happening right there? So that's interesting. And then over here, that's a former team member. Over here, this happened another time I was there, as you can see, different clothing. Uh, I channeled Jacob. I still don't know who Jacob is. There's a couple of Jacobs buried in that 
vicinity of the cemetery. And then, okay, that's, that's the Jacob thing too. Then you got, this was taken from somebody else's camera. It's not blown up, but you can see that wall clearly here. And then this was me going down. Obviously, must have channeling something over here. But I gotta say, years ago, before I formed Essex County Ghost Project, I was with a team called New England Ghost Projects. And they brought Gavin Cromwell from the UK all the way to Haverhill. And that night, we went out to the Pentucket graveyard and to do some stuff and investigate with Gavin. It was a public event that Ron Cullen was running at the time. And we could feel the hill going up. If you ever see that cemetery goes up the hill, it's up the watch. So we took the hill. Got back that night to base camp. My phone was missing. The next morning, we went out to go look for the phone. Couldn't find it. Fast forward about five years later, I was telling the story in this contractor that's now cutting the lawn for the city at the Kentucky graveyard because it's city owned. He goes, yeah, we found the phone in there, the blue phone. We put it on top of the gravestone. So I went up back, I went back that day and the next day, and lo and behold, it was my cell phone. Of course, it was Friday, but it was a very interesting night taking that one down. So that's some of the stuff that's happened at the Kentucky graveyard. Um, we got, and we also, we have some EVPs from there, right? Okay, the first one is an SP7, which some people call a headache device, which is a radio, and what it does is it set the pick up between the stations, the electromagnetic fields out there that cause the EVP, so. Let's see. What was the book? Did you hear it? Everybody hear it? Heard that one? Pentucket is a very tough place to get EVPs because literally you're right on Water Street and if it's busy, you hear every guy drive by. What's the next one going? What? Okay. Loud and clear, and I'll get the love craft in the minute real quick. Okay, and then stop. Okay. Did you guys all hear that? It's, EVP work is very hard to do. Clubs almost it is an expert. Not almost he is an expert. If you do an hour long work of recording, whether it's at somebody's house or one of these locations, it's about two hours over that one hour of recording. So if you do four hours, it's eight hours. Or more. It's not easy. And then sometimes you have to break them down, listen again, make sure it's not somebody's voice in the crowd, especially when we're doing a public event. So it's not an easy thing to do. Um, so we had some interesting pendulum work near um, Salt and Stall's grave. Anyone know who Salt and Stall was? He was a judge during a sale of witches area. And he's buried here in Abel. He's from Abel. He's buried here in Abel. At the Kentucky Graveyard. And 
we had some real interesting hits with the pen from we had a lot of yeses and a lot of interesting questions answered, which because where the soft stall grade is, we couldn't do a lot with EVPs because it's close to the road. So everything was washed. And the Hannah Dustin grave site, the purported site of Hannah Dustin, which was also buried in that back at Green Jack. Thomas is buried there. Not 100 percent sure of Hannah Dustin. Um, but in that area we got some interesting hints. And again, the EVPs just could not be made audible at all for this because of all the trucks and cars driving by. And it's important though, when you go into a graveyard, if you're going to do this, first of all, get permission. But old graveyards are open dawn to dusk. And also, we are a poem about Kentucky. So I'm going to quickly read this poem off to you. Our vale, our vales are sweet with fern and rose. Our hills are maple crown, but not from them our fathers chose. The village burying ground, with, skin, with scanty grave from nature's hand, and none from that of art. A winding wall of mossy stone, cross flung and broken lines. The lonesome acre thinly grown with grass and wandering vines. Without the wall, a birch tree shows it dropped and, ta and tasseled head. Within the stage, born, sumac grows, fern leafed with spikes of red. There, sheep that graze the neighborly plain, like white goats come and go. The farm horse drags his fretlock chain. The cow bell tinkles slow. Low moans the river from its bed. The distant pine replies like mourns, like mourners shrinking from the dead. Thus they stand apart and sigh. Unshaded smites the summer sun. I checked the winter blast. The schoolgirl learned the place to shine with glances, with glances backward cast. So as you can see here, he's already talking about ghosts and spirits. And yes, old graveyards were taken care of by sheep and cows. There was no one always. And the older the graveyard will be, will divvy a little bit because we get some. And it's Halloween. It's that one. Uh, the older the graveyard, like Kentucky, for example, was the oldest. Back then, you passed away, they maybe had a service, you most likely didn't. They dig the hole and turn the body, and you were on your way. By the 1850s, when some of the old, newer cemeteries we're talking about, with the religious revitalization, that's when they started talking about and dealing with celebration of life like we do today. And in the 1850s, they actually had death photos. Um, Whittier had a death photo of himself, actually. Um, I've seen it. Um, I've seen a few photos of his death photos in different libraries and special collections throughout the Merrimack Valley. Um, sometimes you even had your hair left behind. Someone would cut a piece of hair off and save that. Uh, my favorite things, and I didn't bring one, I got a couple of them, they're just buried in storage with it. Hair rings. So they you take the hair of your loved ones and turn it into a wreath. Those were also common back in the 1850s. What? In the person's picture in the middle, yeah. So there was many ways to celebrate death then, but the early graveyard like the Pentakia, no. Those would have been um, some of the later cemeteries, like Hillville Cemetery, Walnut, Linwood, and um, Bradford, Berkeley. The one in Bradford there, yeah, Elmwood and Bradford. So those would be the ones there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to jump out of the graveyard a little bit. All right, and we're going to talk about the haunting Virginia. In this area here. We got some EVPs, we'll be playing them. So we'll talk about them next. 
All right, so the Haunted Bridge, County Bridge Road is now a walking path. Very, very faint. Did you hear that? Try it now, Paul. We heard that. <laughs> it's extremely faint. So we were out on County Bridge Road, and we had the tablet. We were trying to run another tunnel down, so I think that was our third time down there, this one particular time. We were in the afternoon. We haven't been there at night yet, but we will be. And um, we were feeling like we were being watched the whole time. Now, when you head down County Bridge Road and you go over the Hunter Bridge, actually, can't see it on these maps, but so we walk over the bridge, get to the end of the foot of the bridge. There's a road that goes like this. You can see it, it's all overgrown. And then it goes this way down Chatterman's Road, it comes out on East Broadway at this end. Okay. This is called Groveland Bridge Road, the one that So Groveland Bridge Road goes up towards 110. And they got part of Groveland Bridge Road on Route 110 with houses on it, and then it's all woods. And that's the area Whittier would have traveled. But as you go out this way, heading towards East Broadway, there's an area that goes down towards the wetlands that you see kind of in that post guard there. And there's a circle. And you can see what was used to probably be a cabin from the early 1900s. But there might have been a cabin there earlier than that. And there's stories about the Whittier family, not John Greenleaf Whittier, we know where he was the one, everybody knows that, right? The Whittier birthplace. But his grandparents had a cabin out on County Bridge Road. This area is high enough, it's right near water supply. That it actually could be the old family Whittier cabin. Yeah, and in that area there, I don't think we've got any VPs. What one? Oh, yes. Sometimes the ghosts correct us. We'll play that one. You'll hear me say West, I think. And it's on the bridge where you used to hang out as a kid. In another life. Remember this area? We just thought of the, of the wooden bridge. We were being watched by spirits from all around us. Did you hear it? Of the wooden bridge. We were being watched by spirits from all around us. Of the wooden bridge. We were being watched by spirits from all around us. Did you hear it? East? Bridge. Being watched by spirits from all around us. 
You guys did East? So sometimes I get corrected too. Not always perfect. Which is interesting when a spirit corrects you. Know. So that was in that location. And that's a public walking area. It's a little rough to get to because they don't always get it's not well kept up, but you can actually walk that trail. Once you get over the bridge and past the boys and I mean it's right on Mill Road, you can actually walk that. And there's a side trail to the bridge, a little quicker that's cleared. Instead of walking down the original county bridge road, that's got poison ivy going all over the place. Um, that day we were there, the last day we were there. Now, we've always done okay with the Tom Live shows using a tablet or my cell phone. Filming, you know, because I pay extra for minutes and all this other stuff. But that day, we lost everything. We lost the whole Tom Live show. It didn't even, it showed like it was going, and then when we went to end it, it was three minutes long, and we were in there for 35, 40 minutes, if not longer. So we lost that whole area, and it looked like there was, let me see, I know I got pictures of it somewhere. It's not the same thing, though. Give me one second. It, it almost felt like we didn't get any pictures that day, but I had some stuff happen in another cemetery, but I didn't take those pictures. It almost felt like you had like spider web effect over your head. And there was nothing up there, but you could actually see. It felt like the whole area was closing in on us that day. And we were pretty far down there that day. Um, that one particular time when we lost all of this, it also felt like we were being watched, not only by Native American spirits, but possibly a Kapwaki, or better known as a Kapwaki, which is the devil's little, uh, the little fiendish little creatures that look like this for 40 years. They're not pretty to look at. Um, another time we were down there after we did the first show, we bought myself and two former investigators went back. That time we just talked with me, Bob, Joe was with us, and Sarah. But I think Joe with us that Sunday, I can't remember. But last year we went back. That, that would have been the second time, I just told you the third time. And we're walking down the path. <laughs> and all of a sudden there's a trail that goes this way and it goes closer. You can see the highway fence here and there's a trail like an old, maybe log trail from when they were building 495. Not even out of the corner of my head, oh, look at this trail. It's a little ahead of everybody. There was a guy walking with jeans and a jacket. Ain't no big deal. It's the woods. It's a trail. All of a sudden, he just disappeared. Yeah, no, that was not even a big So that's another thing that happened down on that same trail. And that goes out to, like I said, Chinaman's Road. It's the old road out there. You can see it on this map at the end. I'll let you come up and look at the stuff, and I'll answer all the questions if you want. So that's some of the stuff that's actually happened. We truly got everything. They don't, we, have, they don't, we did everything. So that's some of the stuff that happened. Now, Whittier actually wrote about this. And this is a very long poem, so I'm just going to take a very short verse out of this. So, as you can see, I'm used to learning classes. First day with these things. Shad Parish still continues much the same. The unwearied ghost still watches the country bridge, or walks with clattering teeth and eyes aflame. From his old station up to Peter's Ridge, nay, smile not, reader, but as truth received it, Shad Parish woman to man. Believe it. Um, so that's a little scope out of the county bridge. Uh, now, you heard me earlier on the EVPs at the Cup of Gravia talk about how it Philip Lovecraft. Did you hear that about H.P. Lovecraft walking through the cemetery? Anyone here know who H.P. Lovecraft is? H.P. Lovecraft is one of the more, he became famous after he died. Very well known horror author, writer, and his stuff is, he's like a cult figure today. 
when he was alive at Delhi Indian He spent time in Haywood, Kentucky graveyard. Um, he also spent time in Haywood in a couple other locations. His print of Charles W. Tryon Smith is buried here in Haywood Hilldale Cemetery. He came up with these little books that were about this big call the Tryons. And um, I just want to read this excerpt about the county. The, count, the country bridge road. So supposedly, according to local legend, there's a reason why it's haunted. The country bridge road across East Meadow River near the Whittier Hole. Local legend has it the bridge is haunted by victims of an Indian massacre trapped beneath the water under the bridge. After reporting a sighting of a headless ghost, a youth. Youthful John Greenleaf Whitty and several local boys dared each other to cross this bridge at night calling the ghost. The terror that gripped the future poet was permanent. The Hartley County, um, County Bridge is now immortalized in the County Bridge Ghost, but also mentioned passing number of poems and other poems also on the Amsbury Line area. That's where we grew up on that way. Little road. So, and I'm not sure about that. That's an interesting affair, but if you look at it, and you can pretty much see in this right here, it's really not running that fast. So if you walk down there today, it doesn't run. It runs. We had a heavy rainstorm, but it's not running. It. Someone's gonna get trapped underneath the bridge, and it's no longer a wooded bridge, as you can see in this one. Sorry for the people at home, but in this one here. I don't know how you get trapped underneath that bridge. You know, it's high enough up there, you don't need to get trapped. So it's an interesting folklore, though. And it's stuck with Whittier enough to write a poem about it. And that's what Whittier did a lot. He wrote poetry. All right, this EVP I could not find for the life of me. The next place we're going to go to. What? We can go to West Parish. We'll skip to West Parish first. Okay, West Parish burial ground. Second West Parish burial ground. We need to go back to this photo over here, though. Okay. 8, 1780 to 1840. It's on Route 97. Who knows what Dunkin' Donuts is? On Route 97. When you pull out of their, their drive up window, just look diagonally across the street, you're going to see a graveyard up on the hill. So when you're coming down 97, you, you, you know where that red, red building is, where usually the water pump station, and sometimes the state police and able police usually cock their cars there and wait for you to go too fast. Drive up the driveway. Don't go into the private lot. You can park down the water station, but go up the driveway. Take a left. As you're walking, you'll see a graveyard in the woods. Second West Parish burial ground. Um, so years ago, team went up there and we did a circle and somebody outside the circle took a picture. This was going to be the Essex County Ghost Project logo. Probably more as no one could actually do it. The mist looks like a dog face. See the eyes, the nose, and then the mouth. That's the original picture up there. And then I had it blown up for this. You guys see that? All right, so last year, during COVID, every weekend we'd go out there and do a talk live show. So people at home could have something to watch if they did paranormal that's fresh. Joe Bella, um, right there, Joe. Say hi, Joe. Sarah, you went with us on this trip, right? Okay. Just, okay, Bob, and that guy, and they, we went out to, it was actually Memorial Day weekend. Actually, if I remember. Yeah, it was, because we, we had just put the flags up at Hilldale Cemetery, and I had a whole bunch of leftover flags. So we started going to all the small graveyards, Alton Street, Old Grafford, Burial Ground, and we were going to go do the live show, so we figured we'd check this place out. Because it's out in the middle of the woods. We found a few graves, put the flags up in respect of the uh, fallen soldiers. Joe. So Joe was there. 
And um, we come to this grave, and the dates were right. Joe's a Civil War historian. The dates the gentleman lived was right to be a Civil War historian, you know, a Civil War soldier. But it wasn't that. So we asked, and I'll have Joe finish the story. We asked, and this is what we got. We asked if he was a veteran, but we got to play the ass on that one. Yeah. They seemed possibly Civil War era. And we had a job, and I was talking to Bob, and I said to Bob, I wonder if this guy's a Civil War soldier. And then he put the EVP on, and we heard, yes, I am. I'm a yes, I'm a veteran. And Bob told me about it. I basically heard something similar to it. But when Bob said it, I said, oh, wait a minute. Maybe he is. When we got home, I checked the uh, Massachusetts list. Um, the books were made in the Boston in the 1930s. The guy's name wasn't in the list. I went to the computer to check the National Park Service's Civil War Soldiers and Sailors. Sure enough, his name was there. Then I checked the regiment that was listed. And that regiment, fortunately, however, is a hateful regiment. So the Commonwealth of Mass missed this person's name on their list. But the National Parks had him listed as a Civil War soldier. So we put a flag on his grave with the rest of them. So technically, he is a Civil War soldier that buried in West Parish. Um, unfortunately, in these past few years, uh, and, you know, uh, innocent neglect, and he never had a flag. But he is from Haverhill, served in the Haverhill Regiment, according to the National Park Services, who had a great. And that's it. Thank you, Joe. So now he gets a flag. So, very interesting. So now the gentleman has a flag, and we're very happy. We may try to go back and reiterate sure that that marriage is. This is like six or seven grades, and it takes about five minutes to do if you don't learn what the stones are. So I grabbed the extra flag and left a little from Hillville Cemetery, and I go there, and it's no big deal. So, because I want to make sure every veteran gets a flag. All right, so the next one I'm going to go to. So that's the picture there. That's at Green Disease, right, folks? Well, okay. So the next one is the Children of Israel, which is on Middle Road, right after the County Bridge Road, right before Suicide Bar. And um, it's 1893 now. Years ago, Paul Bob was on the team at Essex County, 15, 16 years now. I had my own way of doing things, and my way was very old school, a lot of it still is. How many of you watch the ghost hunting shows? Anybody? Well, if you see the shows today, they use all this modernized cameras and equipment. Uh, six channel DVR system. I'm lucky enough to have a 14 channel DVR system. My team loves my DVR system. It's 14 TVs. 14 VCRs and DVR CD players, thousands of foot of cordage, TV screens, and cameras to deal with the wires still. And we set them up all over the place for each other. Then we go back painstakingly to old video ways of doing things. I also like using cassette players, the old cassette tapes. The reason for that is it slows it down. It's a lot harder to get it off the cassette tape. It's a lot harder to listen because with the system Bob uses, he can kind of scan to look for the uplinks. So it saves a little time. Not a lot, but a little time. And then he cuts it down even smaller. And then he finds these crazy movies and he plays them. 
But I was in there one night with a friend of mine, uh, her wife, and one of the kids. They wanted to go to a haunted cemetery, so I took them to this cemetery because, uh, as you can see, we have this photograph that was on the front page of the Tribune, titled The Nine O'Clock Spirit. And we have some wolves, uh, light anomalies, and around the area. And they basically we were right in a building, right on Middle Road, we weren't even in the cemetery. I asked if anybody was there and said, get out. I got that on a cassette tape. For the life of me, I could not find that cassette tape. It's in my collection of stuff, but with all the years, this was so long ago, and I've had to move some of my stuff around. I have a funny feeling it got misplaced in the wrong month, and I gotta go actually look for it through all those recordings and stuff. So that was interesting. Um, and then we were walking one day from County Bridge Road to Suicide Pond, and I'm like, we are now passing the Children of Israel Cemetery, right on the S Park 7. Yes, we are. We might as well have. So that's a very interesting place, uh, that whole middle road. That's why I coined the area, we'll get back to it right at the end to wrap it up what I was doing. Um, we just did the West Parish Green Yard, so I think that's all of them. But I got one more, but I just want to wrap up this area and then I'll quickly, we're almost out of time, because I could have spent three hours on Haunted Abel. We only covered one section of Abel. We did not cover many other sections. Um, but that's why this area is now being called, what I've called, and coined it, it was a late triangle. Just because of this is just some of the stuff. Like I said, that UFO sighting was maybe three weeks ago. And that's on Corpus Hill Road. And then, of course, when a kid did activity, they all do the Millville Dam area. So you can come up and look at these. But um, so that ends the Canosa Lake. I'm going to briefly, because I got about five minutes left for you guys, and then I'm tempted, then I'll ask to answer a few questions. I'm going to get to my favorite cemetery in April. Anybody know what that is? How would you guess? <laughs> Hilldale Cemetery, located on Hilldale Avenue. I'm in there a lot. I almost live in there. <laughs> I could live in there. I got a crypt and everything. It's, I'm the board president of Hilldale Cemetery, and then with the organization, it's also cleaning it up, and I do run fundraisers there. We got one coming up. Halloween weekend, the last one of the year. Um, so Hilldale's an 1859 cemetery, and there's been UFO sightings as of recent. The bill. So one night I was in there. I don't want to get in trouble with the feds, so we got to watch what I do with the laser pointer. I'm parked, so you go down the road. Here's Hilldale Avenue down the road. There's an open space here. I parked my name in the board just to check something out. I was down there because I had gotten a call from the local PD about the problem. I stayed a few more minutes after they left. And there's a red dot coming up the hill by the tryout spirit ray. Started coming towards me. I put my flashlight on it, didn't do anything. I got a heavy duty light, and all of a sudden you see something like this walking right across the hill. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. What that was, looked like maybe a puck walkie or something. We've had UFOs. This was taken by another team during the group. You'll see a Partial apparition, you see some of the mists. We get a lot of stuff in there. Full body mists, heads coming out of the ground. Um, yeah, we did that. I was training a prospective new team member many years ago. It was 12 or 5 in the morning. She took this picture shooting up Soldier's Hill. And then she took another picture going towards the area that we use for the compost pile. And over the compost pile, she had this black light that went like this. If you look at the green door, you can see it. I know people all can't see it, but it basically makes a rainbow on a black. It went over the trail. And then she took another picture and goes, I'm out of here. I said, what's wrong? She goes, let's meet up and come here. Don't want to talk River Street because I'm out of here. <laughs> OK. And then she got the head coming out of the ground. And then you can see some of the mist that we've gotten through the years here. These are pictures. Um, I didn't bring the pictures with me. They're in my other book. I wanted to bring, you know, you can come up and look at these and all you want. 
But we're doing an energy circle over here up on Amen's Hill of Thistle Wee Hill. And in the past, I've actually looked at people. An energy circle is when we all hold hands and we get together and we um, try to summon up what's in the area. So you can see, and one of my team members got this baby picture here. You can come up afterwards and look at it, but it's right here. So it's quite an interesting location. And in broad daylight, for three Wednesdays in a row, Bob, you want to explain it? Bob will explain this one. Bob runs my uh, tech manager. He's very good at what he does. He did all the EVP work. And he actually got this photo for him. So the one you can start here, I didn't take it with me in the broad daylight, but just explain it. Walking from the still hill. Walking through the still hill. That's why. 
buy some of the stuff I said private homes. I keep uh, the stuff I mentioned were all the public stuff. And the reason for that is even when a kidney's in the book, um, CC's book, what's our title? On the Merrimack Valley is actually Winnipeg Castles in that book. Um, Hillville Summit. Yeah, by C.C. Carroll. And um, Hillville Cemetery is in Spooky Creepy New England too, uh, written by Karen Mossy, who's a personal friend of mine. Um, and a lot of these other songs, like the Covered Bridge and the William Hodgson Bridge and stuff, have been written down for years. So that stuff I don't mind publicly talking about. That picture of the UFO I did want to show because as you can see, you can't see where it is. You don't recognize it's nobody's home. Um, and that funny night, the night that picture was sent to me, it was sent on a Sunday. It was a night we did a ghost hunt at Hillville Cemetery. And we had a few weird things fly over the cemetery that night that I didn't see because I'm giving the guy a tour of Hillville Cemetery. So if people like you that took the tour going, hey, what's that out there? <laughs> you know, so that's what makes it interesting. And when it can be like it. And Millville, it's been moving around the city. So the public places where you can go, I don't mind talking about, but I will not talk about the investigation. I will say this though, one of the private homes I did we were out on the public trail. That's where that thing, the incident happened in Millville. Not in the we close to the lake when the state came flying through. That was from, it started off as a private home investigation. It led us down the trail that they had in the backyard for the kids to go out to the, you know, to the public area. They made their own trails through their private property. And they're like, oh, this happens here, this happens here. I'm like, okay, well, let's go check it out while we're here. And we've been back to that house many, I mentioned many times very active location. Um, same with the Countess Society. I mean, it is a very active location. The Countess is seen every so often. Um, but some of these areas up over here, you can see where I have ghost, <coughs> UFO, and the 70 Satch, but you notice they're all in clusters. That's how it's usually seen. And that's how the Bridgewater Triangle started. That's how the Pacific Ring of Fire started, and the Ossipi Triangle, and another flat area which I will be speaking at next year about is the Salem Wyndham Dairy Triangle, which is a whole other story for another day. Um, some of the other places in Hamel that are haunted, uh, Graphic College, Geographic College, I actually went there. One night I was staying there, which I stayed there a lot, in the Coway area. And I get up to use, you know, the restroom. Girl comes walking out in 1890s guy, which is not odd because Bradford was a little glass college. You never knew what anybody dressed like. Everybody had their own style, and they wore. So I went in, the lights went out, the candlelight, we we'll walk. I'm not thinking anything. I'm gonna have to sleep. And walked in, walked out, walked back down towards the room. I thought she was in the next room, or my, next to my friend's room. She just disappeared. Boom. Oh, oh. Come to find out, there was a lady in white. Many nights staying down at the computer labs, um, doing homework and stuff. And you hear kids' voices inside the tunnels. There were there are tunnels connecting the main building to the two front building. Plenty of activity happened there, even in the back room. So, um, that's another haunted location. Um, there's another house way up on Main Street in Bradford, right on the north end of the line, on 125, the Moses Day Homestead. I can talk about that, because it's actually in two different books. Uh, Moses Day was a minister for the White Church in Bradford, and supposedly, according to a descendant, he owns the house, was a little said and wrote about it. There's a copy of special collections here. So that's another interesting location. Bradford has its own areas along the river, all privately owned homes that we've investigated that I can't talk about, but with a lot of great activity in them. 
So basically from the Bracken Bridge to the Bracken Common, down Middlesex Street, and down uh, by the yard club that way. Um, so if you're standing, you know, in front of Avenue Donuts, the left is the yard club area. Down those side roads, down there, there's a real interesting, there's one neighborhood who did not Six homes in that neighborhood in all the years I've been doing this. Any other questions? Um, can you find the gentleman? Because I think there might be some questions on the tablet. I'm just waiting on that. I just want to make sure we answer these two. Yeah. Can you study him on the North Broadway, North Broadway area? Sightings on North Broadway. On the Crystal Springs Golf Course? Oh, in that area. Okay. I had to think what North Broadway was for a minute. Um, I've heard stories of Tattersall Farm possibly through the years being haunted. Um, I've never investigated the homes in that area, but I've heard from some officials, say, is it St. Patrick's Cemetery up there? That there's been sightings in there. I've never been in St. Patrick's. I've been in there to take some pictures of some stones and stuff, but. Never have I been in St. Patrick's Cemetery on an official investigation. Uh, but there are some beautiful old homes up there. Uh, the, right at the corner of North Broadway, right near Hagel High School, you actually have an Emerson house. Right at that four-way stop, it bottles up every night. Yeah, there's the old Emerson farm, which is related to Hannah's Esther. It's, her, it's the Emerson side of her, her family. That's the old Emerson farm right there. But they, I believe, turned into apartments or something. Now, I, a couple of years ago, I think the place got gutted up. But that's all I know about of that area up there. I imagine if I look hard enough and maybe pull a few old stuff, probably some of your folks I mean, because I've seen them. Near my house, I live in the village uh, off of House Street, which, when you think about it, over 97 down Lake Street, and you're on House Street, so we're not that far away. So there's probably some UFO stuff cited out there, but as far as anything else, no. All right, I guess the size of the people at home. Any other questions? No? All right then, so I, I was hoping you'd come back up. Did you find it? Yeah, I got caging right now. Okay, so we'll keep it going for a few more minutes, and then he's probably got something he wants to say, and I just want to check with the people at home. Um, I got plenty of stuff to talk about. Um, so, other than that, in this section of Cable, downtown, we had, we, I, I've done some walking tours downtown and hit stuff in the old mills. We've done some private home investigations in the downtown where they turn you know, the mills into condos or apartments. So there's been plenty of activity down there, too. Cable's like every other city. But those get its activity, Lawrence has got its activity. That's what happens in big cities where you have to know that a lot of people are congregating. Can you just check? I want to make sure people from home don't have questions and then we'll wrap it up. That's all I was concerned about um, when you do hybrid like this. I want to make sure we get everybody. Saturday night before Halloween, we'll have a fundraising ghost at the Hill Cemetery. Um, Sunday night, I got a live show coming out of eight. Um, LCAP TV, Lawrence Cable TV, you can check it on the website. I got people going to be interviewing from 6.30 to 9 o'clock live on LCAP TV. You can check that out. Are there any questions? No questions. All right, then. Anybody else here? All right. I want to thank everybody. Come up, take a look at these pictures, and I'll answer any questions you've got. Thank you at home. We appreciate you tuning in tonight. And we'll see you all in the parent.